All right, so three examples here on how to solve quadratics. <clears throat> so first and foremost, a quadratic, of course, is a polynomial that has degree two, and traditionally it looks like this, right? Where a, b, and c are numbers, and x squared, x, those are, of course, our variables. This has a, this is a linear term, so it's raised to the first power, and this technically has an x to the zero power right there. Sometimes the coefficients are zeros, so you might have a quadratic that maybe is missing the linear term, or maybe is missing uh, the constant, maybe the constant is zero. All right, so to solve these things, <clears throat> we have lots of different methods, right? We can, the first thing I would do for all these is factor them, all right, then I would if, if the factoring doesn't work, uh, then I would probably take a look at the graph. Right? If, if the graph shows you something that's kind of confusing, then I would go ahead and use the quadratic formula. Right? And synthetic division might come in handy on some of these if you want to, uh, to use that. But uh, So for number one here, we notice that it's not really in the uh, the nice form. This is our nice form. This is when everything is in standard form. This is not. So we need to get the linear term. We need to get that over to uh, the left side. So we're going to simply add b to both sides. And we want three terms on the left and a zero on the right. All right. So the first thing I'm going to check here is if I can factor it. If I can factor it, we're basically going to be like unfoiling, right? If we foil, we multiply two binomials to get a trinomial. To factor, we're basically doing the opposite of that. So it's going to be b and b, uh, the factors of 18. Let's see here. We have 1 and 18, 2 and 9, 3 and 6. So I'm trying to figure out combinations that are going to add to 9 and multiply to 18. Well, it looks like 3 and 6 will work. It's a plus plus up top in your quadratic, so it's a plus plus in your factors. So now we're going to use something called the zero product property. If we have two binomials multiplied together to be zero, then that means that either one or both of them are going to be zero. So you solve both, set them equal to zero, and you're good to go. These are your solutions to your quadratic. Now let's connect that to what it looks like on a graph. So if I'm going to go, uh, I want to go to my graph, my graphing calculator or my graphing program online. So I'm going to go b squared plus 9b plus 18. Uh, if, you, if you haven't used this this calculator right here, I would probably, uh, I would probably check it out. It's www.desmos.com and it's a really good graphing calculator. So let's use, we'll turn these to x's. We're going to use x squared plus 9x plus 18. Make sure I got that right. Yep. Again, instead of b's, we're using x squared plus 9x plus 18. Right, if I plug that into my calculator here, I can see that in fact, it does cross at negative 6 and negative 3. All right, those are really, really important points. And uh, in this case, they're, they're what we call the solutions or the zeros. So if I want to make it a little bit, a little bit easier to see here, again, negative 6 and negative 3. So those are real solutions to our graph. All right, if you're ever asked to graph, of course, all you need to do is translate that to a piece of graph paper. So we want to uh, get our zeros down first. Uh, again, it was negative 6 and negative 3. So I'm going to put, let's see, negative 1 to our first zero right here, 4, 5, 6, our second zero right here. And this thing has a lead coefficient that is positive, which means it's going to open up and cross the x-axis twice. Not the greatest picture of it, but you get the idea. All right, so that's when we have two real solutions. 
over 2. To solve this quadratic, again, we want to make sure that we're in the right format first. So let's go v squared plus 11v plus 18 equals 0. All right, if we can factor it, we'll factor it. If we can't, then we'll use the quadratic formula. This one can factor, but I will show you that even if it can factor, we can solve using the quadratic formula. So it's the quadratic formula is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times ac all divided by 2a. That's something that is critically important for solving quadratics. That's the way to get irrational or imaginary solutions. All right, when you have this, of course, it's in standard form, so we can extract our a, b, and c term. Our a is the coefficient of the, of the squared term. Our b is the coefficient of the linear term, and our c is the constant. So the quadratic formula is negative b, so it's negative 11, plus or minus square root of b squared, 11 squared, minus 4 times a times c, all divided by 2 times a. Simplify. Eleven squared is twenty-one. Minus, uh, let's see, forty and thirty-two, seventy-two, all over two. And I'll take it over here to the right. So that's negative eleven plus or minus. Uh, let's see, negative one twenty-one. Excuse me, positive one twenty-one minus. 72. Uh, it's going to be, let's see, 50? No, that's not right. I'll have to do this the old fashioned way here. We got 9 and we've got 4, so 49. So that's close. All right. So we have negative 11 plus or minus the square root of 49. That's just 7, so we get rid of the, the radical symbol. All right, so this breaks up into two, basically two uh, fract, two uh, options right here. So we have negative 11 plus 7 over 2, negative 11 minus 7 over 2. That's what that, that's really what the, the, the plus minus means, right? It basically means that we have two different solutions going, two different roots. Negative 11 plus 7, that's negative 4 over 2 and this is negative 18 over 2. So our solutions are negative 2 and negative 9. Those are our solutions. Again you can you could have factored that one but I wanted to show you that the quadratic formula works for all quadratics not just the not just the ones that don't factor. Again we want to make connections to uh, to the graph so let's go ahead and graph uh, we're going to graph v squared plus 11v plus 18. So I'll go back to my desmos.com calculator and I'm going to go, I'm going to change all my v's to x's. So I've got v squared plus 11. Let me go back there. Plus 11x plus 18. All right, and you can see right here, you know, I'm going to zoom out a little bit here. I'm going to zoom. Uh, options. Uh, let's take it off projector mode. Ah, oh, here we go. Duh. That was easy. So we zoom out and we see that, of course, you know, this graph is crossing. It's open up because the lead coefficient is positive and it's crossing at you know, the places where we thought it was going to cross at, negative 2 and negative 9. All right, if you wanted to kind of examine that a little further, you can zoom back in. All right, negative 2 and negative 9. So when you go back to your, your graph, or you're going to want to, you want to graph these sometimes for, for homework or, you know, on a test or whatever. The graph is, is going to cross at negative 2 and negative 9 and it's going to be open up to 
just like that. Again, two real solutions. Our discriminant in that case, if you remember, our discriminant is a positive. It's a positive 49 up here. The discriminant was a positive as well. We didn't find a discriminant, but you know, maybe we'll do that really quickly. If you recall from a previous video, the discriminant is the key that unlocks whether or not your graph has real solutions or complex solutions and the discriminant is just the the radicand of your quadratic formula so we go in this case our B term our B term is 9 our A term is 1 and our C term is 18 so this is 81 minus 4 times 1 times 18 so that's 81 minus 72 that's a positive number which is why we had two real solutions. Remember your rules if the discriminant is if the discriminant is positive you had two reals. If the discriminant is negative you had two complex. If the discriminant is zero you had one real solution. That kind of repeats itself as a multiplicity. Alright, getting back to uh, to this idea, right? So again, number two was factorable. If you wanted to factor that, you'd go and factor it really, really quickly. Uh, it's v plus two, v plus nine, but <clears throat> the quadratic formula works as well. All right. So again, we looked at graphing, we looked at factoring, we looked at quadratic formula. Those are the three really easy ways to figure out uh, solutions to quadratics. Number three, last one. Get it into the right format. 3x squared plus 4x plus 7. This one doesn't factor. I'll tell you that hint right now. All right, so we're going to go ahead and use our quadratic formula. When you use your quadratic formula, you need to extract your a, b, and c terms. And then you're simply going to put it into this formula, negative b plus or minus square root of 4, nope, square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. b squared, or negative b is negative 4 plus or minus uh, b squared is 16 minus 4 times 3 times 7, that's 21. I just did a times c in my head, 3 times 7 is 21 all divided by 2 times a. 2 times a is 2 times 3 or 6. So our x value is equal to those two solutions. Let's figure out what the heck they are. Negative 4 plus or minus 16 minus 16 minus 84 16 minus 84 is going to be a negative uh, let's see here, 7, that's 8, 68, negative 68 in our, in our radical there. All right, so we have negative 68 over 6. So 68 is something that we want to simplify. So let's, let's find the factors of it. We're trying to figure out perfect square factors. So first of all, it's even, so let's cut it in half. 2 times 34. Right, that doesn't really help us. How about 4? Four? 4 goes into 68. Yeah, that definitely works. Let's see here. So, let's do it the old-fashioned way. We have 28, so that's 17. So, 4 times 17. So, this breaks up into... There's a negative 1 there. Right, negative 68. So, it's negative 1 times 4 times 17 all over 6. So we can break that up into x equals negative 4 plus or minus uh, negative 1 squared times negative or positive 4 squared times 17 squared. All I'm doing there is using some radical rules there. I'm just breaking it up. Alright, so we need to remember what the square root of negative 1 equals. That's i. The square root of 4 equals 2. I'm going to write it so the 2 comes first. 2i square root of 17. You can't simplify that. 17 is prime. 
over 2. All right, so this guy is, you know, if you were to leave it like that, you'd probably, you know, get a point or two taken off because it's not simplified all the way. You want to look at the three terms here, the negative 4, the positive 2, and the 2. Those are all uh, able to simplify. They all have a common factor of 2. So we're going to simplify them and, re and simplify them all down by 2. Divide all of them by two, basically, is what that means. <clears throat> all right, so they have. Uh, so we took the divisor out of there, and, and now all we have left is negative two, plus or minus i, radical seventeen. Uh, I think I screwed up somewhere. Yeah. Careful with this here. Look at this six right here, two right there. What the heck am I doing? I don't know. I gotta go back and change that. That's not too bad of a mistake though. Six and six. All right, so again, we still have even numbers, so we can simplify them all down by a factor of two. So instead of it being one on the bottom, it's three. All right, and that's a pretty good answer right there. That's, that's okay with me. Uh, some teachers might want you to take it a step further and write it a little bit differently. So let me show you how you might have to write it. You might have to go like this. Negative 2 plus i radical 17 and negative 2 minus i radical 17. And that's totally the same thing, just separating them. You may also see bringing that 3 out. If it's a denominator of 3, it comes out as a 1 -third. And then that leaves you with this kind of by itself. And of course, you can split that up as well uh, into, two into two separate answers. But you know, for our purposes, I'm just going to leave it right here in green. So those are obviously are two complex solutions. The reason they're complex solutions, again, is we want to look at this discriminant. If your discriminant is negative, we have two complex solutions. Uh, so this thing is probably going to be floating above the x-axis. Let's see, 3x squared plus 4x plus 7. I'm going to put that into my little... Let me use a different calculator here show you guys some options here. I'm going to go back to my good old ti. I'm going to go to y equals, and I'm going to type in my function. Let me remember it here. 3x squared, 3, 4, and 7. So i got 3 x squared plus 4x plus 7. And I graph that. And you notice, let me zoom in a little bit here, you notice that the graph is floating above the x-axis. Uh, that's a pretty good indicator that we're dealing with complex solutions. If I had a negative lead coefficient, it'd be floating below. It'd be going this way, down here. All right, so let's put that on our graph here and then we'll wrap this video up. Let me zoom in on this a little bit. And your graph would look, you know, if you wanted to graph this, it's somewhere like up here. Floating above the x-axis because there are two complex solutions. All right, hope that helped you.